us to be here today, to be at this service and this other service over the airwaves, each and every one. Actually, to bless each and every person that has listened to this service at this time. Bless the church, our church family, and friends of this ministry. Bless us that we may become stronger and just be more into your spirit and in tune into your spirit to hear you when you speak to us. Father God, bless those who are looking for jobs, those who may be ailing in health, those who need a miracle right now. Father God, be with us all. Holy Ghost, thank you for coming into us who that believes in you and for those who are looking for you that they may find you in their time of need. Bless those who are on their way to the sanctuary, to your house. Thank you for having your loving angels looking over all of us in times of good and times of bad knowing that you won't leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for your strength and the courage you have put into us. Father God, I ask you to bless each and every nation that is upon this ball called earth that you have created. For some of them don't know what they're doing. They never knew what they were doing when they crucified your son. Thank you for forgiving us for sins that we have done and those we didn't know that we had done. Yes, Lord. For you gave so much for us. And yet, you still have so much mercy. Bless those who are in the hospital that may be in ICU. Bless each and every person there is to help them. Bless the doctors, the nurses, those who are in the nursing home, those are caretakers. For Father God, we're nothing but your workmanship, as you said in your word. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless this government and the things that they are trying to do for the people, for your good. Touch the hearts and minds of every politician up there on the hill. In Jesus Christ's precious name, thank you for this day. Thank you for this hour. Yes, for you are all, our all in all. In Jesus Christ's precious name, bless this church. Bless the ministry of this church. Bless the pastor and all that are involved. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Bless you. Samuel, the chapter 1 through 20. I don't know if anyone wants to read all of that or not, but, but, I, but I, I just want to bring up this mother. Uh, her name was Hannah. She wanted a child. She wanted to be a mother. And you got the, my pastor spoke about that when he got up to introduce me that some wants to get pregnant. They want to have babies. They want to have want to be a mother. That's part of a woman. Production is part. Everything 
brings forth, that God did bring forth production. Your, gra your, your, your grass in your yard multiply itself. The animal produced themselves. And so th when God made mankind, mankind and brought us in, mankind and woman has come from the same order. And uh, so we, when he did that, he, God produced everything so it can be multiplied. So I can see the desire of the woman that wants to be a mother and trying to be a mother. So, but you can be a godmother. You can be a, and, and help raise another child. And there's children in foster home. You can go there and become a mother. Sometimes you see on TV on the Wednesday's child, some child, thanking God for their mother. So you, you look at many phases of being a mother. You're never too old to be a mother because, uh, you, like I said, you can become a godmother, a foster mother, and help reach out and help somebody else because in, in this world, we need to help one another. I have more children now, uh, I go to the beauty, uh, beauty school down in Kannapolis. They, uh, 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 Evangelist Bailey went in there calling me Mother Phil. Now, I go up in there, the white girls doing hair. When I walk in, they say, here's Mother Phil's. See, that's the life you, you can live as a mother. And I'm, I'm that way because pastor made me a mother of, of the ministry. Be more than who you are. And that's, I always had that desire. I don't want to be stagnated in one place. And sometimes I find myself stagnated because of the conditions that's going on. And I said, well, Lord, if you let me stand, as long as I can stand, I'm willing to go all the way. Are you willing to go all the way today? Are you willing to stand for something? Stand on that foundation that's not made by hand. If we are really to stand, my desire to stand and to help whosoever will, I can. Do whatever I can. At Tower of Power down there, now we, I, I got a young lady. That I'm working there. She come to church every Sunday. She come and grab my pocketbook. She opening the car door for me. And and she work. I got on a ring on my finger. For well, one, got the Holy Ghost in my daughter's kitchen. See, you 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 can you can work while it's day. As Bishop Roberts used to say, when night come, no man's work. You don't know where you're going to get someone help at. What you're going to do for someone, wherever. We, we got to sh uh, broaden ourselves. That's a sophisticated uh, attitude that we have. We don't do this and we don't do that here. We don't do, get outside like I did. When I went into the Antioch church, I was rejected. So I hit the streets. I went cross over there where the playground at. And start talking to the people who was in the tra trailer. And the, they said some things to me. And then all of a sudden, I start having a following of children. Rodney said there is one of them. This year is one of them. The children, they start coming home with me, spending the night with me. And if they were hungry, they'd come by my house. Don't let a snow day come. I would make a big pot of oatmeal. A bit, put, this, put some sugar in because we were eating sugar then. Then I make a big pot of hot chocolate. And my little house that I had, children were tromping in and out of it all the day. All day. The children, see, be more to a child than just your own. And that's why my daughter Toby said, I have had to share my mother all my life with somebody, and I'm still out here to be shared. Whatever I can do, I want to do it unto the Lord. And I want people to know that I love them because I felt unloved most of my life. When I was a child, 
because my mother died young, and I was treated very bad. But I made up in my mind I wasn't going to treat others that way. Everything I could get to will let me love them. I will love them. They're going to be loved. I don't care what race you are, where you came from, well, I'm going to love you. And I, I let you know I love you. Some people back away from me. That doesn't matter. I love the one backing up. I love the one that's coming forward. I love them. And you on this broadcast, I love you. I don't know you. Never met you. But I want you to know I have the love of God for you. Somebody love you because somebody after that today, mother's gone. And I'm, I'm standing here today in the stead of every mother. And to tell you, mama love you. Yeah, yeah I love you. Yes, Lord. You, you got a mother that love you. And I'm that mother. I never met you, never seen you, but I love you. God knows who you are. He, and he, he goes, let you feel this love in your heart today. I stand for mothers today. All that, that had mothers. So if we can get to uh, the scripture here, because I'm beginning to feel anointed, and, and I don't want to, get my, to lose my thought. Uh, but well, I want to, this, this woman was name was Hannah. And if someone will read the scripture from 1 through, uh, I think, t through 20. Yeah. It's almost a whole chapter. See, even, even if I have a physical problem, I can love. You want the, you want the mic. So do you. You want to come do it here. There was a, there was a certain man <coughs> of, of uh, Ramatha Amzo Bim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was uh, Elkanah, the son of Jeraham, and the son of Elihu, and son to Taha, Tahu, the son of Zuk, and uh, Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penanai. And Penanai had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in, in Shiloh. And the two sons, Eli and Hophni and uh, Phinehas, and the priest of the Lord, and the priest of the Lord were there. Yeah. And yeah. when the time was that Elkanai offered, he gave to Pen Penanai his wife and to all his sons and her daughter portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her anniversary, her adversary also provoked her sore for no, for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so, the, did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, she, um, she would, so she would provoke her. Therefore, she, sw she wept and did not eat. Then said, Elkaniah, El 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 her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? 
and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? And am not I better, better to thee than ten sons? Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and also they had drank. And e Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not, not forget thy handmaid, but will thou give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days yeah. of his life, and there shall no, no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked his, her mouth. Now Hannah spake, into her, spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away the wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrow spirit. I have drank, I have drank drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for the daughter of Belaliah, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the Lord and the, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. And We're going to praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Did see, and he, God granted her her petition because she acts. See, we need to ask sometimes, pray and ask God mm -hmm. for some of the things we need. Wherefore, it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that, that she bared a son and called him Samuel. You see, God answered her. Sometimes, sometimes I get so impatient because, because God, I, I, I'm one of these people that I want it to happen, happen then, yeah. now. I don't like to wait. And th then then I get out there and try and help God and start doing it my way. And I can't do it my way. I got to wait on God. And I don't like to wait on God because I, I, I'll be bargaining with God. God, you know I'm doing this. God, I'm doing that. God don't want to hear that. He know my, my my beginning, and he knows my ending. And I don't know what he's going to do in between. But we done got like this microwave cooking. We done got a microwave attitude. Why we want it turn up right then. Won't learn how to wait. And we want too much in the first place. And look at what happened to Hannah. God gave her a son because she prayed and asked. She don't pray enough. Sometimes I'm up in the middle of the night. That pastor gave me to speak. I, one night I prayed all night. Every time I wake up, I'll be praying. I said, now, Lord, what am I going to tell the people for this Mother's Day? She buried a child, didn't she? Because God gave, allowed her to conceive. And we are thanking God for what God can do. We see in this word, it tells us what God can do. But we done got so out of sync with God. 
And I know about that because I've been out of sync with God. See, the Bible said, confess yourself. Y'all won't know. I'm up here trying to teach y'all. And if I ain't no, nothing ever happened to me, I ain't went through nothing, then how could I tell you anything? Yeah, I can't tell you nothing because I ain't been through nothing. My li I've been walking on a bed of roses all my life. But you got to talk to somebody doesn't have a problem. They may not have but one. But that one had devastated them, that one problem, and they need God to solve that one problem. And sometimes I go, for God, go before God for myself, and then I start going for pastors. I start praying for churches everywhere. The peoples of God. God help us. Bring us up. Then I had to pray for pres the president of the United States. I said, Lord, give him a godly mind. And look like some things is happening there. Oh, yeah. So we got to pray for what we need. Because we are in a mess here. Oh, yes, we are. And, and we got to pray for our need. And we got to ask God, like, hey, it may not be a having a baby. It could be something other than that. But we can still pray for it and pray for others. Lord, help us. When, you know, when I get to talking to God, I say, Lord, help us. Meet our need, God. Take care of the situation I'm in, God. And sometimes it's two or three and four, five years, ten years coming. But God, but he, God always on time. And everything he bring to us, it works at the time. He desires to work it. That day all again. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do God said that. I'm gonna do I got other peoples I got to bless other than you. He got to bless somebody else other than me. So he got to help somebody else. But he can bless us all at one time if he want to. Because he's God. Hallelujah. He he can all we have to do is just speak. He's God. And I just thank God for this message. My uh, thank God for what He gave me for this message. How if we would just ask? It's a song. Just ask the Savior to help you. I'm for strength and heal. He'll deliver you. Ask Him. And sometimes I pray so hard until I'm tired, and I lay there and go to sleep. And wake up and start, Lord, wake me up. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, God, I want to sleep. But see, when God calls you to a mission, and there's a need out there, if the people that, that need it, they may be praying and somebody else may be praying. But some people, oh, every time I see them, they're complaining about something. Oh, they, they, I never see anybody have so much trouble in all but now everybody has trouble. Oh, yeah. It's nobody that's not having trouble. If you look around, my brother never been in a hospital, never been in his life. The 82 June the 14th. First this week was in the hospital three days. Had bursitis in his body. Got to a place he couldn't walk. Never been sick. I was the one sick. And I was said, Lord, I don't understand why everything got to come on me. But God, I had to do the mission of God. God had to teach me different things. So I know how to deal with every, the things that come my way. And sometimes I don't know how to deal with it. I just have to stop and say, wait, wait a minute. We're going to pray right now. And I pray about it and go on about my business. I said, God, I done gave this to you. Now, you, God, you, you, you take it from here. No, I don't know what to do here, God. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know how to comfort the, this person at, at this moment. I don't know. I'll be honest. I'm up there talking to God. But God, help. And sometimes they say, well, I have to walk through the house of Lord, help. Because a lot of people still, even now I've gotten in Salisbury, a lot of people's coming at me. Me and say, well, I don't know why I draw these people. <laughs> but I know who do it. God do it. 
I have opened myself up to God. And, and God wants us to trust him. He wants us to come to him. He wants it. So, so that's why he, he, Jesus died on the cross. Amen. He di Jesus died for us. Amen. So, so we can have an adversary. So we got to know who to go to. Because some people you go to, they won't pray for you. I've had people to say to me when I first got in the church, yeah, I never seen anybody have so many problems the way you do. That's a person that's not concerned about nobody but themselves. Self-righteous people. And so, but you but know what God was doing? God was showing me the difference. I didn't know that time. I know it now. I, I, I know it now. But God was showing me the difference. And, and if I can't do nothing else for you, I'm going to pray for you. Right. I can pray with you. And, and, I, and uh, I just thank God for a hand this with Hannah. She, she prayed, and God answered her prayer. And, uh, and we just thank God. And God, what he did for Hannah, he can do it for us. Oh, yeah. He's the same God. He was working at that time. He's working in this time. He's working now. He, he, he's fully there. And the next scripture I have is Ruth, Ruth uh, 14 and 22. A time of sorrow for, for them. Now, I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit before. Ruth was uh, a mobile, and she got married to uh Naomi, she was married to one of Naomi's sons. And she her sister in law was Oprah. And uh, it'll come out in the scripture when it's read. It, maybe uh, if you read that first, maybe I'll get, get more clarity on it. And th they was uh, in a time of sorrow. Because Naomi had lost her, 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 her husband, the boys that had the husband had died, and the two boys had died, and they had wives, they had no children. Uh, uh, Ruth fourteen, chapter fourteen and twenty-two. Ruth, the book of Ruth. Fourteen. No, fourteen and twenty-two. Chapter fourteen and twenty-two. Let me see. What, am I right here? No, wait a minute. I may be not. Let, I don't know. Did I write the wrong one down? Well, is this a 14 chapter? Four. It's four. Okay. I'm, I may have wrote that the wrong thing on the paper. Ch chapter. Chapter four. You said four. I don't see a chapter four. Be patient with me. Thank you, Jesus. Now, God, lead me to, to that scripture.
Lead me to it, God. Well, well, well what's in the, in, the, in the scripture that I'm talking about? Uh, Ru- Ruth, Oprah kissed Ruth and said good back to, bye to her. Now, uh, Oprah, they had came from a era where uh, you found it, 2014, 1 and 14. Okay, she found it. You want to read it? And, and they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Threat me not to leave thee or to return from the following to the following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. The, the, the thing that I saw in this, thank you, minister. Thank uh, for being my eyes today. The thing that I saw that Oprah went back to her country. They were idol worshipers there. They wasn't worshiping God. But she had a, got enough from Naomi to kiss her. See, Naomi was a godly woman. And she worshiped God. She uh, uh, served God. So she and Ruth picked down from that. So we as mothers, that's what I want to bring, as righteous women, our lifestyle should be so it would draw someone to God. And look at what Ruth Say it to her mother-in-law. Your God will be my God. She had transformed totally. Ruth, she was transformed there. Something in us as a mother should be able to transform somebody to, towards God. Now, Oprah went back. They said, a dog. Now, I've seen this happen. A dog won't go back to the a dog will go back to his mama. Once I was, uh, someone I went over there at work away, but that dog throwed up over there. He went down and laid where he could watch it. Laid on when his stomach settled, he got up and went back and ate it. See, sin, you go back to sin. Trust doing the things that you used to do when you was out in the world. You can't call that righteous. And that's why the Bible said a dog will go back to his mama. Do you know the I don't know the scripture right now, but it's in there. And if you search the scripture, you'll find it because I have read it. And Oprah went back to her, her people, to her practice before she met, married Naomi's son. But along the way, Ruth saw something different. So she decided to change. And she that's what she told her mother-in-law. I'm going to say Ruth would go out and glean barley from her mother-in-law, for her mother-in-law, so they would have something to eat. And Boaz came along, and he saw her out there, and he told the people who kept the fields and did. He told them to leave some behind for her. Do you know he, he, he ended up, she ended up marrying him and having a baby. So that was a child come from this lifestyle. A child came out of that situation. God blessed that situation. And, and, and the roof, Naomi took care of that baby like it was hers. 
And you see what God can do if we can wait on him and do, and do what he wants us to do. And I know I was one, I, most of the time, I never did want to do what God wanted me to do. And God was me speaking to it, and God speaks to all of us. He speaks to you daily, but we don't hear. And that's why the book, book of Revelation 6 and 3, and I've been preaching this for the last five years. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. The Spirit of God is different from our thought. Because the book of Proverbs says his ways is not our ways. His thoughts is not our thoughts. Change, we can change our thoughts. We can change the way we think. Because the old way didn't work. You, the, God, this way ain't going to work either. So we got to change over to the will of God. We got to do the will of God. We got to work while it's day. And we got to do what God wants us to do. Uh, uh, why this church is empty today, don't have no more than y'all here. People don't want to live for the Lord. They want to go where the big crowd is at. And, and go in. Uh, uh, I preached a message at Antioch one time. They pick up the Bible when they come in the entry of the church, the word when they come in the church. And when they leave, they lay it on the back seat because they don't want to stop, give up sin. That, they don't want to give up sin. And today we got to want to give up sin. We got to walk away from sin because it, it ain't but two ways, heaven or hell. And somebody uh, told me about something happening in Hawaii now. Oh, yeah. That Hawaii is sinking and, and, and bubbling up. The fire is burning. And that's, I read a scripture, and I don't know where it's at, at now, where they say hell is beneath the earth. So how do we don't know where hell is at. But the Bible said that's where it's at. We got to start believing the word of God. We got to start doing his will. We got to start looking at ourselves. I was old when I really understood what God wanted. I always loved church, and I love God, but I didn't always live it. But today I'm trying to live it, and I hope you all got a little something. I got a lot out of that because I want the will of I want to do the will of God, and I want to. Tell the people the truth. And I don't want to give them no false impression on any, any of that. And I thank you all for your patience and your, and your, and your, that you pay, had patience with the old gray hair. And I thank you all for that. God bless you and happy Mother Day. Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Renzo James Fields invites you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Budenite Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church.